Hi there, this is Giuseppe Corcella from Virtual Orchestration and today I'm going to review the Poiesis Cello by Sonora Cinematic. First of all, I want to thank Sonora Cinematic for kindly sending us a copy of the library to review. Poiesis Cello is the first chapter of the upcoming Poiesis Strings series. It normally sells for £82.5, but it's currently on sale at £66. It works in the free contact player 6.5.3 or above and it's NKS ready. You need to download uh, the library via the Pulse uh, downloader first and then activate the license via native access. Poise's cello features 47 articulations and its size is 5.29 gigabytes. On the website you can find uh, more information about uh, the library itself, uh, the idea beyond it uh, and a couple of interesting walkthroughs where Alessandro Mastroianni explains everything you need to know about this library. Poiesis Cello comes with two NKI instruments, uh, textures and shorts. Textures is the real core of the library. It's based uh, on a very simple engine uh, featuring a one big knob uh, you can use it to crossfade between the two layers. So you have basically two layers uh, and if you click on uh, the name uh, of the articulation you see that uh, a window opens with uh, a lot of articulations as i said there are 47 articulations in total and you can just uh, click on uh, one of these articulations uh, and uh, it will loads uh, into the ram and uh, you are ready to play it same thing uh, with the b layer you can choose any articulation and uh, you are ready to go the big knob is assigned to cc1 the volume is instead assigned to CC11 so if you have the chance to move CC1 and CC11 uh, at the same time you can really create something interesting out of this but if you don't have this uh, possibility you can just override the CC11 uh, later on on the main page uh, you have here four faders you can control the mic positions with as you can see this cello was recorded using three different mix LCD which stands for live large diagram condenser and they used a Newman U87 mic, a ribbon and AEA R84A and a small diagram condenser a Shapes CMC MK4. Then you have uh, here the pre-rendered stereo mix, uh, also a bit uh, processed, so you can get a full uh, and uh, wide sound out of uh, this one. Of course you can assign the mix positions to different uh, outputs uh, and you can also change the stereo position uh, using the pen knob uh, and of course uh, change the amount of volume of uh, each uh, mic position. When they are deactivated uh, they are also purged from the RAM, so if you you enable them uh, you see that uh, the amount of samples uh, loaded into the RAM uh, changes. You have then an advanced uh, window you still have here the big knob uh, but the lower part changes you have a few yet important parameters here there is a reverb with two presets hall and room and uh, you can enable or disable it and then you can choose the send time and pre-delay of the reverb. You can choose the release of the samples and also you can decide to add a player noise by clicking on this button and then you can choose the amount of noise to add to the samples. This is very important, the X-Fade curve lets you decide which type of crossfade you want to get when moving the CC1 to go from articulation 1 to articulation B. Here you can enable or disable the Dalniente dynamic. If this is enabled this means that when the expression is at its lower point you will get no sound while if this is disabled when the expression is at its lower point you will still get a very soft sound. By activating this one you enable the possibility to use the pitch band on layer B to create a few real-time variations of the pitch. So now let's try to play around with some articulations.
uh, you can clearly see that uh, when the big knob is uh, almost uh, completely near to the left or the right side you hear just uh, one of the two articulations but as soon as I bring it uh, slightly to the center you can uh, hear the second articulation slightly coming in one thing I almost forgot to tell is that uh, this patch features just uh, long articulations which it makes sense if the purpose of it is to create ongoing textures. As you can see the articulations are divided into some groups uh, depending on uh, what uh, they do. You have uh, ordinary tremolo sul tasto, sul particello, you have let's say uh, some common articulations uh, on uh, different uh, dynamics, uh, mezzo piano, forte, for which the purpose is to have a specific timber. Indeed uh, you cannot uh, increase or decrease the dynamic, you can uh, increase or decrease the volume, but the purpose of this in my opinion is uh, indeed that uh, you have uh, uh, some kind of timber you can mix with another kind of timber and then you can uh, play around with these two kind of sounds and uh, increase or decrease the volume but uh, uh, staying uh, on this kind of uh, texture. Emotions uh, are basically some uh, repetitions on different articulations and in different uh, tempos. Uh, so uh, slower repetitions, uh, faster repetitions and so on. Then you have four textural articulations here. They are basically articulations in which the player played uh, randomly some uh, techniques to create an ongoing and evolving uh, kind of uh, sound.
in this last part i was also moving the cc11 on my ipad to let you hear how it sounds with also the volume changes So if you use the single mic positions, uh, maybe you have to work a bit on them. The sound is much better than when you add the reverb, of course, uh, and uh, you see that uh, you can uh, get a very different kind of sound uh, when you start playing around with the pen knobs. On the other side, the mix position gives you a more ready to use sound, in my opinion. 
product so it's totally up to you how to use uh, these mic positions and uh, which ones uh, to use it depends on the kind of sound you want to achieve the mix position you cannot uh, decide uh, where to place uh, the single mics of course nor the volume amount of uh, each one it's indeed a more ready to use uh, position but i think it's great to have the single mic positions uh, available because uh, you never know the kind of use each composer wants uh, to do with the library let's try now the textual articulations I think the volume knob to the player noise is a great addition because you can also decide to use it as a creative tool. You can bring it 100% up or so and you will have an interesting addition to your texture. Also you can hear that the pitch band works actually on the layer B alone and only if this function is enabled. So uh, indeed in the textural articulations you can actually hear how the samples are evolving. The second patch is called Shorts. These features uh, just three articulations and they are actual playing techniques. They are pizzicato, staccato and spiccato. This is a, let's say, an acoustic cello playable patch. Let's call it this way. The difference is that you don't have an engine that allows you to mix between two articulations. This is an actual and let's say common acoustic cello patch with also key switches that allows you to use uh, just one uh, track in your sequencer and switch uh, between the articulations using the key switches or articulation sets or expression maps depending on uh, which sequencer you use. It also have the same mic positions than the textures uh, patch and this is a very good thing because this means that the library will play at the same uh, way, it, it doesn't lose the consistency between the two patches and in the advanced uh, tab uh, you just have uh, the reverb and the release parameters. <music>
on the pizzicato articulation uh, if the velocity is uh, set on 127 it triggers uh, the snap pizzicato very nice let's go now with the staccato So in conclusion, I think the cello itself sounds quite realistic. I personally like a lot how the spiccato sounds in this patch. A thing I really appreciate is that you have dry samples, both with the mix mic position and with the other mic positions. You actually have to add the reverb if you want to add an ambience. This is uh, really important uh, if uh, perhaps you want to use uh, a special dispatch uh, as uh, a normal acoustic cello and you want to add your own uh, convolution reverb. This actually helps you. 
and uh, they sound good even if are dry and of course uh, the sound is enhanced when you add the reverb the overall library is really minimalistic but you have the most important things to work with also the reverb has just two presets but they do their job and also you can actually hear a difference between the hall and the room presets and of course when you have dry samples you don't care about which reverb you have and how many presets you have inside the library itself because uh, you just can add uh, whichever reverb you want uh, and uh, you don't risk to some uh, different uh, ambiences uh, together. In the text of patch you can uh, easily hear the actual sound of the cello. I also liked a lot uh, the textural uh, patches in which uh, you can uh, actually hear if you keep on pressing the notes you hear an evolving sound also here the interface is really minimal but you have all you need to work with this library i think it's a kind of library that sits between the acoustic world and the ambience world it's not meant to be used as a sound design library in my opinion but uh, indeed you can have uh, different kind of uses depending on what you want to to do with this but the actual uh, cello sound is the main character here so if you want to use it uh, on a more acoustic side uh, you can do that also indeed uh, all these patches uh, in my opinion uh, blend well uh, together if you want to use more of them in the same uh, music and also they blend well with the short uh, patches as i said the player noise uh, volume is a great addition in my opinion and also the x fade curve you can actually hear a difference between how the two patches cross fade last thing in my opinion uh, the price is uh, fair for a library like this so it's all for today thank you for uh, watching i hope you found this uh, review useful and if you already tried uh, poises cello let me know what you think in the comments below if you want to support virtual orchestration please subscribe to the channel join if you wish our newsletter and click on the notification bell on youtube to get notified as soon as we release a new tutorial or a new review i wish you a good day and see you on the next review